families and APS students. Welcome to At Home with APS. We are so happy you've joined us this week and we hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, first grade. Today we're going to make rhyming words and blend words with multiple syllables. Okay, so our first example for rhyming words. I'm going to say two words that rhyme and you need to think of at least two more words that rhyme. Look, book, took, cook, hook. Okay, here's our first one. Space, place, race, face, Case, all right, try to come up with at least two. Corn, horn, torn, born, worn, all right. Clock, shock, block, dock, knock. All right, great job. Did you come up with two rhyming words? All right, swing, bring, thing, sing, fling. Okay, what about broom, room, groom, zoom, boom. Did you think of another one? Good job. Okay, the last ones, skunk. Dunk, hmm. junk, sunk, bunk. All right, so now we are going to blend words with multiple syllables, okay? We've done this all week. Okay, so here's our example. Spaghetti, spaghetti. Try to say it fast, blend all those parts together. Try to beat me. All right, here we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good job. Ant eater. Ant eater. That's an animal known for eating ants and termites. Okay. Hurricane. Hurricane. Those are those powerful storms that have an eye in the middle. Usually come, um, you know, on the coastal states. Okay. Next one. Hospital. Hospital. All right. Grandfather. Grandfather. Valentine. Valentine, dish washer, dishwasher. The last one, buffalo, buffalo. Great job, first graders. Hello, first graders. I'm Miss Kalungle from Abingdon Elementary. And today, I'm here to read a story to you. The title of this book is The Day I Needed Help. Young or old, we all need help sometimes. In this story, a boy needs a lot of help when he falls off a cliff and hurts his ankle. Luckily for him, a search and rescue team is ready and waiting. The Day I Needed Help teaches us about the people who work to keep us safe and help us heal. As I read, think about who helps the boy in this story. The Day I Needed Help Mom, Dad, and I like to walk in the woods. We like to find new trails. We like to find new places to picnic. I walk down a trail after lunch. I see a big blue butterfly. 
Look, I call out. Mom and Dad don't hear me. This butterfly is beautiful. I follow it and catch it. Which way is it going? Oops, I tripped. The sky looks dark. Have I been asleep? I know I tripped and fell. I see a man wearing a big blue jacket. Your mom and dad called search and rescue, the man says. How did you find me? I ask. They let Goldie smell your jacket. Goldie followed your smell, he says. The ambulance team finds us too. They put me on a stretcher. They carry me to the ambulance. Goldie comes with us. My ankle looks big. The ambulance man puts a balloon thing around my ankle. We'll ride to the hospital, he says. The doctor meets us at the hospital. Mom and dad look at my ankle. The doctor looks at my ankle. I don't think you broke it, she says. The nurse helps me get an x-ray of my ankle. I didn't break it, but I have a bad sprain. My ankle will get better. Mom and Dad thank everyone who helped me. We stopped to thank Goldie, too. Do you remember the people who helped the boy in this story? You're right, the search and rescue team, the ambulance team, the doctor, the nurse, and of course, Goldie. They couldn't have done it without him. I hope you enjoyed this story. See you next time. Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Kaufman here from Barron Elementary School. I'm a reading specialist that works primarily with kindergarten and first graders. Today I wanted to read Down by the Bay with you, a poem that's in the Continuous Learning Plan. Please point and read as I share the poem, Down by the Bay. Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say, have you ever seen a duck driving a truck down by the bay? Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, have you ever seen a mouse building a house down by the bay? Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home. I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say, have you ever seen a bee sipping iced tea down by the bay? Thanks for reading along with me as we read the poem Down by the Bay. Now I want to go back and talk about some vocabulary to make sure we know what all the words in this poem mean. The first word I wanted to talk about is dare. It says, I dare not go. You might have heard the word dare before if somebody challenged you to do something. Somebody might have said, I dare you to climb to the top of that tree. Well, in the poem, when they say, back to my home, 
I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say. The narrator is saying he will dare not go home. He will not do that. He will not challenge himself to go home because then his mother will say a silly rhyme to him. Now I want to talk about the next vocabulary word, bay. I drew a picture of a bay right next to it. A bay is a body of water that is surrounded by land, but on one side it flows out into the ocean or the sea. This is the bay. We have many bays around us in Virginia and in Maryland and in Delaware. You might have been to the bay before. Now, let's talk about rhyming words in the poem. I'm going to read the first stanza to you. And as you listen to me read it, tell me, do you, any, do you hear any words that rhyme, that sound the same at the end? Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, have you ever seen a duck? driving a truck down by the bay. As I was reading this, I heard lots of words that rhyme. In the first part, it says, bay. Bay rhymes with the word say. They both have that A sound at the end. Bay, say. Can you come up with any other words that rhyme with bay and say? I'm thinking of some. How about the word way? Or how about the word tray? Or how about the word slay? Like I slay the dragon. They all have the A sound. Let's keep reading. Let's see if there's any other words that rhyme. Have you ever seen a duck driving a truck? down by the bay. What two words did you hear rhyme in that sentence? I heard duck rhymes with truck. Duck and truck have the same sound at the end. They have the uck sound. Can you think of any other words that rhyme with duck and truck? Ooh. How about the word puck, like a hockey puck that a Ovechkin would hit? So duck, truck, puck. Can you think of any other rhyming words? Turn and tell somebody at home or whisper it in your hand. Think of some other rhyming words. Let's read through the poem one more time. And as we read through, let's see what other rhyming words do we hear. Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say, have you ever seen a duck driving a truck, down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, Have you ever seen a mouse building a house down by the bay? I heard some more rhymes. What did you hear? Can you mark them in your poem? Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, Back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, Have you ever seen a bee sipping iced tea down by the bay? Did you hear some more rhyming words in that part of the poem? You can mark them in your poem now that you've heard them. Go back and find them. Now, our last activity today before we say goodbye is I want to point to some words and I want you to tell me how many sounds do you hear in that word. For example, let's work on the word bay because we've talked a lot about it today. If we say bay slowly, like b, a, just like you would write it, how many sounds do you hear? 
I hear two sounds. B, A, Bay. I hear two sounds in the word bay. Now let's look at another word. How about the word grow? How many sounds do you hear? I hear g, r, o, grow. I hear three sounds in the word grow. Let's find one more word. And how many sounds do we hear in it? Oh, home. Let's listen to the sounds we hear in home, just like we would write it. Om, oh, home. I th hear three sounds in the word home. Thank you so much for listening as I read aloud Down by the Bay with you today. I hope you liked it as much as I did. I love this poem. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Today we are going to read Flies, written by Anthony Kieran. Flies are fascinating insects that come in many shapes and sizes. Flies will give us a detailed look at these animals, exploring what they have in common and how they can be different. While flies are often thought of as annoying pests, we will learn how flies are important. Flies. Our focus question today is, what does this book teach you about flies? Words to know. Germs. Insects, larva, pollen, pupa, solid. Let's get ready to read. Here's our table of contents. What are flies? Fly bodies. How flies grow and change. How adult flies eat. Flies and germs. Why flies are important. Gross, but cool. Glossary. What are flies? Flies are insects. There are many kinds of flies. Net-winged midge, bee flies, thistle gal fly. Fly bodies. Flies have one pair of wings. They also have tiny arms that help them steer when they fly. Tiny arms, wings. Flies have eyes that let them see all around. Each eye is made up of many little eyes. Here is a close-up of a fly's eye. How flies grow and change. All flies start as eggs. Each egg is tiny. Fly life cycle. Starts as an egg, then turns into the larva, next the pupa, then it grows into the adult who lays a new egg. A horsefly laid hundreds of eggs on this plant next to a pond. Out of the egg comes a larva. The larva eats plants, fruits, or dead things. When the larva is grown, it forms a hard cover. It is now a pupa. Horsefly larva. Black fly pupa. Black fly larva. The pupa changes inside the cover. When it comes out, it is an adult. Adult flies do not live very long. Their main job is to lay eggs to make more flies. Fruit fly pupa. A new adult horse housefly must let its wing dry and spread out before it can fly. How adult flies eat. Adult flies drink all their food. They spit on solid food to turn it into goo. Then they drink the goo. A blue bottle fly uses its sucking mouth part to feed on kiwi fruit. Flies and germs. Flies sometimes pick up germs from the things they eat. Some of the germs can make people sick. Dozens of flies feed on garbage. Some flies suck blood. They can spread germs in the blood from one person to another. A horsefly sucks blood from a person. Mosquitoes are one type of fly that can be dangerous to people. Why are flies important? Flies spread pollen. Many plants need pollen to make seeds. This fly is feeding on the pollen on a flower. The pollen looks like a yellow powder. 
Flies help break down dead plants and animals. Fly eggs and young are food for many other animals. Green bottle flies feed on a dead earthworm. A bird feeds on a crane fly larva. Gross but cool. Flies are amazing insects. Green bottle fly. Here is the glossary. It teaches you what germs, insects, larva, pollen, pupa, and solid are. I'm one of the reading specialists at Arlington Science Focus, and I'm here today to share with you a literacy tip that you can incorporate into your everyday routine. So we know that two predictors of reading success are knowledge of the alphabetic principle and phonemic awareness. And today, during our daily walk around the neighborhood, we're going to be practicing blending and segmenting multisyllabic words at the syllable level. And joining me is going to be my son, Harrison, who's at Gleep Elementary School, and my daughter, Evelyn. Let's go. Good. And there's Woodlawn Park. How would we clap Woodlawn? Woodlawn Park. Very good. Woodlawn. Woodlawn. Rainbow. Rainbow. It's a little library. What How about glitter? Clap? They put glitter on here. Glitter's a good one? Glitter. What about library? Oh. How would you clap that? Library. Library. Very good. <laughs> the way you might extend this activity is to come home and have your child write a letter to grandma or grandpa about what they saw on their walk. And they should say the words themselves and listen to the syllables in order to break it into the word into smaller pieces. You'll also notice that they're using the skill as they're reading and come to unknown words and have them look for a part in a word, try the different parts, and then blend it back together. I hope you enjoyed our neighborhood walk. Have a great day. As we end this episode of At Home with APS, we hope that you enjoyed seeing APS teachers and staff bringing literacy instruction into your own home. Maybe you even got to see one of your very own teachers that you worked with during the school year. I'm sure that was really exciting for you. So we invite you, parents and families, to continue to take videos and pictures of how you are engaging in literacy activities while at home. Be sure to tag us on whatever social media outlet you prefer using the hashtag at home with APS, and we look forward to seeing all the exciting and creative ways APS students and families are engaging with literacy while at home. And who knows, maybe you can make a special guest appearance on At Home with APS. Speaking of which, check out this dedicated APS student as she practices hearing all of the sounds in the word box. Box. Until our next Early Literacy episode, we ask that you stay safe, stay healthy Arlington, and we look forward to seeing you again soon for our next edition of At Home with APS.